Welcome to this special session. Adamus requested this. And with that, we have questions from Russian-speaking Shambra all over the world. And uh, it is our pleasure. Nazar Fedunkov took all the questions and translated them to English for us. So here we are. I hope you're ready. There's quite a lot to get through. So with that, let's take some good deep breaths. The good deep breath of life. Open to the energies, allowing it to flow. Breathe deeply, opening to all the potentials. Take that good deep breath of life. That good deep breath of life. Feel it. Feel all those energies, they're all there for us. <clears throat> Take that good deep breath. Breathing, feel Adamus, he's here. Can you feel it? Just breathe it in. He's always here with us. So with that, let's take that good deep breath as we begin. I am that I am, Adamus of Sovereign Domain. Uh, welcome to this very special session. And yes, indeed, I did ask for questions from the Russian-speaking Chambra from all around the world, uh, including Ukraine, Russia, and many, many other places. And I was delighted by the response and by feeling into the energy of the questions that uh, Linda will be asking during the session. But a few, first, a few opening remarks. To all listeners, especially those in Russia and Ukraine, let's stand behind the short wall. This is not just an issue about two countries, two peoples. This is a global issue, an issue that has come to the forefront in the news and media that has caused a lot of argument and debate, that's causing a lot of fear all around the world, wondering what's going to happen next. Let us as Chambra stand behind the short wall. Let's not get nationalistic. Let's not choose sides. Because that's really what the energy wants you to do, is to choose sides. This, this power energy that's taking place, this issue is wanting you to choose sides. In a way, it's like the sexual energy virus. It has attributes of that as well as some other things. And it would like you to get into the game. It would like you to take sides to get into the fight. And remember what I've said for so very long now to Chambra. The battle is done. The battle on the outside, taking up causes, that's not why you incarnated on the planet now. You incarnated to bring consciousness at a time that is most needed to the planet. It's not a time for taking sides for battle or causes. It's time to stand behind Tobias's infamous short wall. Observe what's going on. Be aware of what's going on indeed. But instead of taking up arms, whether it means literally or through your thoughts and beliefs and words, it's not time for any causes. That's not why you're here on the planet. And it's not needed. It's not what we want within the Crimson Circle. Those who are with the Crimson Circle right now, that call themselves Shambra, are here for something very, very special, the fulfillment of an Atlantean dream, the fulfillment of so many lifetimes of suffering to bring that to an end. The ones who are here as Shambra right now are here to bring consciousness at an epic time on the planet. The epic time revolves around the whole evolution into a new human species that's taking place. You're at the birth of it. Much of it is uh, brought about by technology, some by evolution, but most of it is brought about by consciousness in this bringing about of the new human species. That is why you are here. The situation that you have with the the battles in Russia and Ukraine is all part of a final clearing 
of some of these very old, old power issues on the planet, there is literally a huge power vortex over this part of, of Europe, over Ukraine and Russia. It has been around for a long time. As you know from the previous world wars on the planet, it has shifted and rotated. At times it was more centered over Poland or Germany or Austria. But now this vortex, this very nasty uh, vortex that simply doesn't want to go, is situated over the area of Ukraine and Russia. The vortex, and there are power vortexes all around the world. This one has to do with war and battle, taking one's land, their homes, and essentially their freedom. There are other port power vortexes around the world, some having to do with technology, some having to do with finances. And they're not always bad, but what these power vortexes do is they, they swirl up the energies of power. And for those who aren't aware of them, they get caught in these vortexes. As you've seen, many, many uh, business people have gotten caught in them, uh, technology people. And ultimately, they, they serve to bring about a balance, but while they do, they cause a lot of chaos and, and harm to human life. So there is currently this power vortex, you could say, taking its last stand over this part of the world. As we get into the questions here, I want you to understand it's not an issue about whether you like Ukraine or Russia. It's not a nationalism issue. Not for us, Shamba. Perhaps for most of the rest of the world it is, but this is simply an issue about power and ultimately about freedom. As you know, one of my greatest passions in working with Chambra and anyone else is for freedom. This came about with my own experience in the times of Atlantis, where uh, I was a slave boy in the temples of Tian and ultimately got caught up in my own crystal prison. Now I say it's 100,000 years, whether it was that or 10,000 or just 1,000. It, it seemed like 100,000. I found my way out when I realized that I put myself into that situation, therefore I can get myself out. And when I did, when I stepped out of that crystal prison that I had been encased in for so very long, I made a commitment to work with those who seek freedom for themselves. It is not necessarily about freedom for your family or your country but freedom for yourself. And I have diligently worked with all those who have chosen freedom. And that's what I continue to do with Chambra. With Chambra, it's not freedom from uh, a country or a government or anything like that. It's freedom from mass consciousness and freedom from their own past, freedom from the perception of a very, very limited reality base back into your natural state. So that is my passion. It is about freedom. I take no sides in what you would call this, this conflict, this battle, uh, because that would be falling right back into the trap. But I do have the advantage of an overview, you could say from Angel's Peak or behind the short wall, whatever it happens to be, uh, in observing the energies that are at play here. I see right now that this whole era of empire building on the planet, which has gone on for a long, long time, but in particular in the last 500 years on the planet, I there's no room for it anymore. Empire building, whether it's America, whether it's uh, Great Britain, whether it's France, the Netherlands, uh, any other country, Japan, there's just no room or place for empire building. Now, we're going to be discussing <coughs> Russia and Ukraine in this session, but it applies to any country now that tries to invade another, to build their empire. There's no room for it anymore. And literally, as the consciousness of the planet increases, those who get involved with the power and empire building, 
and restricting the freedoms of others, they will find their own hell. They will find their, that their ways will no longer be tolerated by the planet. A long time ago, in one of the very first shouts I did after Tobias left, I asked the questions, are, are humans ready for freedom? And of course, uh, in the audience, everybody nodded their head, and I shocked them when I said, probably not. And that was a number of years ago. And what's changed since then is more and more humans around the planet are ready for freedom. They're ready to be who they truly came here to this planet to be. They're ready for the freedom from, from governments and freedom from mass consciousness. So that is what's happening right now in this situation. Again, you can change the names of the players instead of Russia and Ukraine. You can make up names. It's the same thing. We're watching, we're watching a battle take place, but a dangerous battle. Because right now it involves, it involves lives of humans, but more than anything, it involves the nuclear peril on the planet. Russia has more nuclear weapons than any other country in the world, the ability to destroy the world a hundred times over. And that's what they would consider their ace in the hole, their, their top card, if needed to be played. Will they? Perhaps it has been discussed very recently, not a full-on nuclear war, but uh, the use of limited nuclear capabilities and combined now with the nuclear power plant in the Ukraine. That's become the part of the battlefield. What will come of that? What happens with the shelling that's taking place uh, of that nuclear power plant? Will it give out? Will it turn into a, an environmental and a human disaster? So you can see things are right at the brink. As we go into these questions, it's not about pointing fingers. It's not about saying what country is right or what country is wrong. It's not about nationalism. It's about doing what you came to do here on the planet, which sometimes requires letting go of family, as we've discussed with ancestral freedom. Sometimes it requires letting go of things like nationalism, which some of you are still very invested into. Sometimes it requires letting go of things like your biases or your preferences for, uh, for certain things so that you can be clear, so that you can have clarity about life itself. So we're going to get into the questions. Feel into your own energies as you listen. Feel into your own biases as you listen. And feel into the energies of the questions being asked as you listen. Take a good deep breath. We're here for consciousness, not nationalism. So with that, dear Linda, let's begin with the questions. Okay. First question, and this is exactly how it was presented. Dear Adamus, this year in Shouds, in Kihak, and in a special session, you described the situation in Ukraine as a power vortex, and you said that Putin symbolizes power there, and Zelensky is a rock star, and he symbolizes freedom. But so far, you haven't said a word about other sides of these things. At the same time, there is a there is the power of the U.S. government behind Zelensky, and they still regard Russia as their enemy. Using power of money and public sentiment and manipulation, they brought controlled people to power in Ukraine. With their approval, Zelensky and his predecessor have been killing Russian people in Ukraine for eight years just because they want freedom to speak Russian and to live their own life. And don't say it's a conspiracy. For most people in Russia, these are obvious things, and this is a huge part of this power vortex and a huge part of planet energy. Without it, there would be no power actions of Putin and Zelensky's fight for freedom. So the question is, why do you only name the side and keep silent about the other? It looks like, for the most part, you're just repeating the American media and taking sides. And the second question, which, which kind of related to the first one, could the awareness or beliefs of Caldra of Linda, of the Crimson Circle staff, affect to what you say or what you don't say. 
Thank you very much for your answers and for the Crimson Circle staff for selecting questions. If there are no questions in the session like this, Russian Chamber will consider this a manifestation of censorship. <laughs> good, good question to open up with. Uh, and uh, some of the things you stated are very true. Uh, there, uh, I said this is a power vortex. It's not about just one person. However, the, I name certain people who are the actors in this, whether they are Russian, whether they're Ukrainian. They are the actors. They are the ones who the media and the attention and the energy is focused on. Now, the fact is that uh, when you speak of President Zelensky, uh, I didn't say he was a rock star. I said the world views him as a rock star, the world outside of Russia. Uh, he's the small guy. He's the David and Goliath, and humans generally like picking the David. And in this case, the David has been quite successful, you would have to admit. Uh, there are very few who would have placed wagers on the fact that, uh, that Ukraine would have lasted this long, uh, that Ukraine would have prevented Russia from taking over Kyiv that the Ukrainians would have put together such a, uh, such a strong defense for their own country. So uh, just to make the record clear, it wasn't I that said that I feel he's a rock star. The world feels he is. And, and I know that is an embarrassment to the Russian people. Now, uh, you also uh, talked about the power vortex. Uh, absolutely. Uh, that includes many other factors, including American influences, business influences around the world, uh, other countries, including China, Germany, uh, most parts of Europe. They're all involved in this. They're, they all have, they all have a, a power interest in the game, whether the power is regarding energy, the energy sources from the from the oil from Russia, whether it is financial, um, they're all playing into this. Again, uh, let's not be nationalistic. Let's take a look at the whole picture. However, the fact is that, uh, that Russia did invade Ukraine, and it's hard to deny that. Now, you can say that is for that many years that the uh, Ukrainians have killed the Russians, uh, in particularly in the uh, parts of Ukraine that were taken over by Russia, and that is indeed true. It wasn't an all-out war. It wasn't a declared war, but it is true that it has happened. Is that enough to justify an invasion? Um, well, in the minds of some, it was, but uh, for those of us here as Shambra, uh, no, it really, it really does not justify it. This whole issue of power, particularly through uh, the bully force of weapons and uh, arms and troops, is coming to an end. Russia, uh, the Russian officials, are learning that just sending large number of troops in, uh, as the Russians have done so often in previous wars, doing it with the masses of troops doesn't work anymore. Uh, it has to be much more strategic, and ultimately, there'll be a realization from both sides that it has to be negotiated. Now, negotiated truces like this are difficult because people come to the table with their power agendas, and uh, when those fail, they resort back to war, brutality, killing, and chaos. But there's going to be a turning point in this whole issue very soon. We're recording this on September 7th. Uh, hopefully, Chambra and Crimson Circle will get this out soon. But there's going to be a turning point before the winter sets in. And whether that turning point is because of some mass uh, catastrophe that takes place or simply because the troops are wearing down, the money is running out, and people are basically sick and tired of this whole thing. It, it's... Uh, in a way, on a world stage, you could say that the world has been watching this uh, much as they'd watch a football or soccer game, but they're now tiring of it. It's getting old. Lives are being lost unnecessarily. And on top of that, economies are being ruined because of it, particularly the Russian economy. So that's why I say it's up to all of you, whether you live in Russia, whether you live in Korea, no matter where it is, you came here to this planet to bring light. 
that light illuminates other potentials. Right now, for the most part, the ones who are involved in the leadership or the manipulation of what is going on in Ukraine and Russia, they don't see the potentials. They see their careers. They see the public sentiment. They see their own wealth. They don't see the potentials for a resolution to this conflict. But with your light, they will begin to see, as painful as it may be to some of them, that this cannot go on any longer without it turning into a worldwide catastrophe. And that is exactly why I've called for this session, why we are sitting here, and why I encourage each of you to release the nationalism behind many of your thoughts. I have not said, nor would I say, that it is only Russia being the bad guy. Uh, the whole world's involved in it. It happens to be that the power vortex is sitting over this region and that certain actors, players like President Putin and President Zelensky, who come to the forefront at times like this. So, again, I repeat, it is time for consciousness, not battle. It is time to bring light to the world and not focus on nationalism. Thank you. Excellent first question. Okay. Oh, and to answer the second part of it, uh, in regarding a bias, Calder and Linda, a and my own potential bias, I have spent a lot of time in Russia in my lifetime as, as Saint Germain. I uh, was great friends with Catherine the Great. I found her to be absolutely delightful, other than some of her politics and her regard for people and humanity. But she was intellectual, she was charming, she was funny, and she was very seductive, uh, which, by the way, I never fell into. I spent a lot of time in Russia during that lifetime, living there for almost a year at one point, but going back and forth. What I was trying to do throughout Europe was to get the kings and the queens and the leaders uh, and the royalty to grant freedoms to the people, to go to move to a democratic system rather than the system, the outdated system of royalty. So I was doing it throughout all of Europe, not, not just Russia, but in France, uh, in Germany, in England. So my bias towards Russia is my memories of it being a most beautiful country, uh, the environment, the, the landscape, and yes, long winters in some parts of the country, but I found it to be most beautiful. I found the Russian people to be some of the most down-to-earth, <coughs> organic people, real people. And I, I loved uh, some of the arts that came from Russia. I've spent other lifetimes in Russia prior to that of St. Germain, and I always enjoyed being there, being with the people. However, my bias, if I have one, is the leadership of Russia for going back a long, long time. Leadership of uh, dictatorship, of brutal rule over the people, of vast differences between the, the, the ones who had money and, and power and the ones who didn't. I love the, the, the common person in Russia, nothing like them, a great sense of humor once you uh, get to know them. So as far as my own biases, I have a bias towards Russia. Uh, my own deep sentiments, feelings, and love of Russia, wanting it to return to its natural state rather than a state that is uh, controlled by governments and people in power. That is my bias for Russia. So yes, I, I do have one. I would like to see the freedom of the Russian people after long periods of suppression, whether it was communist, whether it was the czars, but it has been suppressed for so very long. It's a country filled with vast natural resources and a country that was filled at one time with some of the greatest intellects on the planet. Now, as far as Calder and Linda, <laughs> Indeed, they grew up in the United States, and their backgrounds uh, are American. However, I would have to say a couple things. They have traveled the world. They have traveled to what, nearly 40 countries around the world. They've seen things that 
For those of you who haven't traveled, whether you've stayed in Russia all your life, uh, whether you've uh, just been in Spain all of your life, it's difficult to have a perspective of your own. It tends then to be shaped by the media. Once you travel and once you see the world and you get to know the people, uh, not just going to the tourist locations, and I was always delighted that Calder and Linda didn't just seek out the tourist locations. They they went to the heart of the countries that they were visiting. It's given them a good perspective of what's taking place. And I uh, feel that uh, Calder and Linda, they know they live in America, but I don't believe that they have a nationalistic feeling about it. In other words, that America's the greatest, America's the best, and do everything you have to do to support and defend America, that's so yesterday. That's so old right now. And if they did have a bias towards it, uh, I would make sure to intervene so that it didn't taint the work that they're doing. I do know that they have no desire to, uh, to have the work tainted or filtered in any way. It has to be transparent. It has to be open. Now, there was a time a number of years ago where Calder and Linda were headed to Russia to visit. Uh, they had flown from Denver, Colorado to, to Frankfurt, Germany, on their way to a visit with Russia. And at this point, Calder, I don't want to say he became ill because he wasn't sick uh, if a doctor had diagnosed him, but his energy just stopped. Everything just froze up. It, it, just, it just literally... Uh, it just stopped. He couldn't go any further. It was a difficult time for both he and Linda because they've always done what's necessary to to travel, to do the workshops, to be with Chambra. But in this case, uh, Calder just couldn't go any further. There was a reason for that. It wasn't because of their feelings about Russia. They were actually enthusiastic and looking forward to going to uh, a new place. But it would have been dangerous for them to go there. It was actually Kathumi who finally came in and uh, did the final intervention, had a long talk with Calder and said, you simply can't go there. It would be dangerous for both he and Linda. Dangerous because there was a high probability of them getting arrested and facing time in prison or jail for a number of reasons. Uh, it from all we could tell, it was the, their event there in Russia, in Moscow, had attracted the attention of some government agencies. And uh, they were going to literally be at this gathering uh, in Russia. And again, a very high chance that Calder and Linda would have become, uh, would have been charged with being subversives or, or being spies. When we realized that we being those in the Crimson Council, uh, we did do an intervention. And it's not very often that this has ever happened, but the last thing we wanted to do was see our messengers, Calder and Linda, uh, in a Russian jail. Because many of you realize, uh, whether you're in Russia or any other foreign country, uh, it's very, very difficult to work within a system you're not familiar with, within a system that's not your own home country. I don't want to carry on too much about it, but some of the very reason that they were on the Russian government radar had to do with me, uh, St. Germain, having been in Russia in the past. Uh, mm, even though it's been hundreds of years, my, my name still shows up in some of the lists, and uh, this is what caused the attention and the attract uh, the attention of some of the Russian officials. So it was not their decision. It was not because of any uh, bias that they had towards Russia. It was simply dangerous for them at the time. So let's move on to the next. So, dear Adamas, my name is Elizabeth. I'm from Ukraine. I'm Shambra for eight years now. There's a terrible war going on in my country, Russians killing, peaceful people, brutally murder children, old people. They burn the fields with their beautiful wheat, torture and burn young guys alive in the barracks. They shoot houses and drop bombs on shelters where pregnant women hide. 
They rob houses, rape young children. All this is absolutely true. I'm Ukrainian, and when I see all this, my heart is being torn to pieces. Everything that you taught me for so many years sinks in immense pain and pushes me off the bench where one can sit and shine. The horror that I see and the close proximity to all of this makes me think about your philosophy of watch and shine. Accept your darkness as your aspect. Accept the aspect of injustice. Accept and let go of everything that the Russians show. And most importantly, when I'm in the midst of all that is happening, the whole concept of master's neutrality collapses. I know you're familiar with such energies and you've seen it many times, but for a person to be here in this experience to see what they are doing, how all world organizations are powerless in their own power and desire to consume Russian gas, they make us die and close the fight against the dark forces with our bodies and the bodies of the children under the rocket attacks. Dear Adamus, being in Ukraine and shining is unbearable. This is very po painful. It's impossible to say it's not mine. I'm a master. I don't play it. Our people are crying. Their hearts are breaking. Yes, we're very strong. We are united. We raise the whole world in struggle uh, and a single heartfelt impulse. But Adamus, dear friend, tell me, what explanation can find for yourself in order to stay in the light, to be here and shine so that your heart does not die in, of pain and hatred. Looking at thousands of murdered children, peaceful people, all the terrible atrocities, it's not the same as to be in America or somewhere else. There are different levels of living this energy. I don't compare. Uh, don't be angry with me, but be a wise master and be content with the explanation that is simply power dying in this way through Ukraine. It's not possible. I know that the master has a different task, but it hurts a lot. I know how quantum physics and Adamus physics work, and it's just a process. How can I resist hatred and injustice? I'm very tired. I miss your explanations, and I see and feel so much pain. This is not just a war, this is a genocide of Ukraine. First of all, dear Elizabeth, uh, please understand that you're not alone, and I know so often you do feel like you're alone. Uh, very few that you can really talk to about uh, the situation in the terms that uh, we're talking about here. It is very, very difficult being in the middle of the storm and trying to maintain a balance, trying to shine your light. And I have to say, in spite of all the circumstances that you mentioned, you have been doing an incredible job. I know there are times when you cry, when you, your heart aches, when, when you're filled with anger. And that does not mean that you're not a master because even the master feels the anger. In a recent master's life, I talked about uh, both sides of the river. You're still a human on one side of the river, observing, feeling, being right in the midst of this, this terrible, terrible situation that's taking place. And on the other side, you're a master, able to sit back and realize that, that it, it's, a, it's a power war that's going on. And it's humans battling against some of their old traits. It's uh, the clearing of many, many old karmic attributes on the planet as humanity enters into this uh, new human species. But all that said, it doesn't make it any easier on you. I'll let you know that Shambhar from all around the world have tremendous empathy. Now, please understand that it's not about taking sides. I know some of you are, get all agitated that we're taking sides and we're going to side with Elizabeth from Ukraine because of all she's going through. We're not taking sides. It's about shining light, and it's very difficult to do when your country has been invaded, when there is uh, the, the situation of rape, of burning of fields, of stealing of civilian uh, property, of bombing schools and hospitals. Now. I'm not taking sides, I'm stating facts. And I know for some of the Russian chamber, you're going to disagree and say, well, it's all being made up. I know that it's not, and I think you know that it's not. So back to you, Elizabeth. I ask you to just take a little break here. You've been so diligent in your shining of your light. 
but now it's important for you to take care of yourself. It's difficult to do, yes, with all the atrocities taking place around you. It's difficult to do when the, this very power vortex is trying to pull you into it, which it has not ver been very successful at doing at all. But now take some time t for yourself. If it, means, if it means taking a vacation, if it means going off to another country for a little while, you need it and deserve it. You have been on the front lines of consciousness, not of battle, but of consciousness for a long time now. And it's a good message and a good statement to all of you if you're feeling exhausted at times from shining your light, from being in high consciousness. Step back for a little bit and take care of yourself. You'll be, you'll be back to the benching, to the shining your light, but right now if that light is getting overwhelmed by the power, by the, by the darkness, take time to take care of yourself. Dear Elizabeth, you'll come to realize someday the tremendous impact that you had on this whole situation. And again, it's not about winning or losing. And some of you, you're already wagging your fingers at me, and I wag mine right back. It's not about winning or losing. It's not about nationalism. It's about right now taking the light to put the old power issues off the planet. So thank you for the question. And please know that I am here for you at any time. Just call out my name and I will be there for you. Thank you. Next question. Okay. It's in the news. They often say that the U.S. wants to destroy Russia to subjugate it to its influences. Because of this, after watching the news, there is a hatred for America and the entire Western community. Is U.S. really Russia's enemy or not? If you take a group of uh, 12 Russian people, everyday people, and a group of 12 Western or let's say American people, and put them together uh, at a, on, a, on a boat uh, and uh, just ban any talk of politics, uh, the people would get along famously, wonderfully. Uh, the Russians, they, they have such a, a great, deep heart. Uh, they, 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 they love the music, they love the, uh, some of the great pleasures of life. And the Westerners, the Americans, uh, so open to others. I don't know, some of you Russians may not know that because you haven't visited, but the Americans truly are one of the most open people and accepting people in the world. The problem is now not the group of Americans and Russians. They would learn to uh, enjoy each other. They would tell stories. They would talk about their families. Uh, they would have a uh, few drinks and dance and, and talk well into the night. It's the leaders that are affected by power on the planet right now, their own egos, their own past lives that have come back to try to, to dominate and rule under the guise of trying to do it for the betterment of their people, but it's really not, and we all know that. So in terms of America trying to take over Russia, well, that would have been easy to do uh, at, when the Berlin Wall came down, when so many of the satellite countries uh, moved away from Russia. It would have been easy to do at that point, but America not only does not have a desire to do it, at least through military means, uh, they understand uh, that there is more of a business opportunity than anything if you want to be angry with the Americans, if you want to point fingers at them trying to take over anything, do it from a business standpoint because the United States has no desire to do it from a military standpoint. They could have in the past when Russia, when the Soviet Union was at its weakest. Uh, and if you look at history, America does not have a tendency to go in and occupy the uh, countries that it has defeated in war. It literally goes into those countries and tries to help rebuild it, yes, sometimes with an agenda towards their own businesses, their, their own financial gains, but generally there is a true desire to help a country and its people rebuild themselves. 
They didn't go into Japan and take over the government and make Japan a part of the United States. They didn't do it with Germany. They haven't done it with most other countries. So historically, they don't have a a, a path for doing that. So it, this whole fear that uh, America is trying to take over Russia is uh, literally comes from the propaganda of the Russian government. If you talk to American people one-on-one, -on -one, if you share with American Chambre, you'll soon come to realize there is no desire to take over. The Americans fear more than anything the Russian nuclear capability and the fact that uh, it, Russia may attempt some sort of uh, nuclear war without any good cause or justification but because there is none for nuclear war. So the concern with Americans and the West in general is, is Russians' nuclear capability. Russia becomes the bully on the block, the one who uh, is going to try to beat up others uh, because of its own strength. Russia currently has nuclear strength. However, they do not have uh, much military strength. The military strength uh, is, was part of um, a facade, of course, and as everyone is learning in this war with Ukraine, this action with Ukraine, that so much of the Russian military is ineffective because of the high level of corruption within the, the Russian government. And again, I'm not talking about Russian people. I'm talking about the government. So the bottom line is that for, for you in Russia uh, to understand uh, the West is not trying to take over. More than anything, the West would love for Russia to become involved in the international community in terms of finance and business, social programs, uh, and peace initiatives. But Russia is viewed by many around the world, and, and not necessarily my view, but it is viewed as the bully on the block because of the nuclear capabilities. So uh, let's take a good deep breath with that and, and realize that the uh, uh, United States and even the European countries have no desire to try to take over Russia, but they do have a fear of the nuclear capabilities. So Adamus, with all this bloody murder of this invasion and all these horrible things, soldiers being killed and dis hurt from both sides, how can you possibly still say all is well and all is creation? That's a very good question. And how can you say all is well when a young child dies uh, a month uh, after its birth? How can you say all is well when you see uh, families living in a car uh, without a home, when you see people going hungry? But the true master understands that all is well eventually because each human, each soul being is making their own choices. They're acting out. Uh, not, they're not being forced to by anything else. It is their choice. And at this point, unfortunately, they're choosing to live a life of suffering and a life of, of pain and living, choosing to live in a, a world of darkness and, and killing and battles. But ultimately, all that goes away. And you realize that, first of all, there is no death and truly there actually is no suffering. It's difficult for you to understand if you're still in human form, but there is no ultimate suffering. All is well in all of creation. If you can tap into that and the perfection of your own soul, not, not trying to push this on the rest of society, not trying to make the universe a perfect place, but tap into yourself. All is well in all of your creation. And the moment you realize that, you realize that, first of all, you're the one that created it. And secondly, you're the one that can create anything you want. You can release yourself from suffering. You can release yourself from pain. You can release yourself from the human condition. Humans still battle and they still suffer. And as this new species of humans is beginning to emerge on the planet, there is an underlying desire in, in this embryonic stage 
an underlying desire to have no more suffering, but yet it's still taking place on the planet because humans are still in their old karma. Humans are still into power games. Humans still are into manipulation. Uh, when I began the session, I said that so much of what's happening right now with this with this war is similar to SES, the sexual energy virus. Uh, the it is consuming uh, people. It is it is this virus is uh, consuming power. But eventually, you learn that this virus isn't. Uh, doesn't belong to anyone. It's not a conspiracy. It's simply a, a virus of consciousness. And what we have going on here right now in this conflict is power trying to take its last stand on the planet, power not wanting to relinquish its control, the people in power not wanting to let go. They'll sacrifice human lives. They'll destroy uh, the environment of the planet in order to hang on to their power. That's why right now is the time for Shambra, whether you are in Russia or Ukraine or anywhere else on the planet, is to go beyond this and to understand your light is needed here on the planet right now. As a human, you might be upset or angry uh, about what's taking place, but as a master, it's time to shine your light so that this whole issue of old power and all the suffering that goes with it is banished from this planet once and for all, especially with the advent of the new human species. What's taking place there? Again, you put names to it. To, there's players and actors, and you talk about uh, President Putin, President Zelensky. You talk about other countries and leadership and, and uh, wars and who's trying to take over who. Rise above that chamber, all of you. Let go of the nationalism. Let go of your own biases and angst. We are here now as a group of embodied masters to bring the light, not to rattle our swords. Thank you. Um, in the last show, Dhamma said that Russian Chambra is less free than Chambra from other countries. Can you explain this thought? Uh, yes, less free, uh, not at heart. Uh, naturally, you have the same freedoms, but if you choose to live in, um, let's say, a country like North Korea, you're going to have a lot less freedom because of the dictatorships. In Russia, you have less freedom. For instance, if you want to start a business, uh, and you want to uh, pursue your passion, you have less opportunities because of government controls. You have less opportunity for media in Russia. Most media now is controlled by the state, and the ones that aren't uh, uh, simply are just small voices where the state isn't going to worry about them until they become larger voices, and then their voices will be squashed. You have less freedom in terms of uh, your who is elected, uh, because the slate is pretty well put together and uh, it's pretty well dictated who you're going to vote for. So, uh, And those who try to run in opposition to the current leadership uh, find um, <clears throat> their lives to be very difficult, uh, much less freedom. And if you haven't traveled, if you haven't been out of the country, lived out of the country of Russia, it may be difficult to see because of the hypnotic effects uh, of the media that are taking place. But you, if you get out, you realize there are countries that are much, much more free than where you are living. I've said before that countries' leaders are uh, indication of the consciousness of the people. Uh, the, in other words, it's the consciousness, or therefore lack of consciousness, that elects or, or allows things like uh, uh, royalty or allows dictators to take over, allows uh, uh, leaders to come in and decide that they're going to be the leaders for life. Uh, the planet isn't going to tolerate this much longer. The planet isn't going to tolerate imperialism. It's not going to tolerate the kings and the queens of old who uh, were somehow given a right to rule over people simply because of their birth lineage. There is a 
there are countries that are much, much more free than Russia right now. Uh, so much has been suppressed there. And uh, n not just political freedom, but freedom to choose what you're going to buy at the market, uh, the freedom to choose uh, the type of job you want and how you're going to retire, how you're going to live your life. So much of it right now is being absolutely controlled by a government, and the blame ultimately goes to, to the people in terms of them allowing this type of thing. One of the interesting traits of the Russian people, it's in the ground, it's in the air, is that they continue to allow uh, the, uh, the, the leaders uh, the, to control them. Uh, they have, for a long, long time in history now, they have had, whether it's the czars or whether it's the, uh, the, the Communist Party, they've allowed it to rule over them. There's something uh, you could say in the people that wants that father figure that, or that mother figure, but let's say here the father figure, uh, they, to control their lives. It's time that the Russian people take responsibility for themselves, no longer allowing the government to control everything they do. And again, some of you are wagging your fingers and saying, well, the American government or the German government controls the people there, not nearly to the extent. Uh, you're right, there is an amount of control, but not nearly to the extent that you get in Russia. Why is that? Ask yourself, why? Why do the people allow government leadership to control their lives as much as they do? Are Russians not ready for freedom I, I, as a whole? I know many of you are, but are the people not ready for the freedom? Well, that's, a, that's a great question. So it's really about, ultimately, again, about the whole issue of of freedom. Are you ready for it? And when you are, then things will start changing. Thank you. If we go beyond Putin's personal incarnations story, is there something else behind Ukraine and Russia's endless conflict? There, it's like a like a family in a way. Uh, I'll use the situation uh, as an example between. Uh, Israel and and Palestine, and and some of the uh, the Arab countries. Uh, it's all part of the same angelic family, and as you know, sometimes uh, the the family battles are the worst. They all come from the same the hepuru, and yet and they find themselves living in the same area together. And yet there's the constant battles and wars. Now, it's a little bit different with uh, the Ukraine and Russia. It's not all from the same angelic family. But the common factor here uh, and, and the reason for so much conflict is this area has been a power center for a long, long time. And people find themselves uh, attracted to it. They find themselves uh, s moving into and even staying in those areas generation after generation into the power. Power needs something to battle. It needs something to fight. It needs, uh, uh, it needs something to overcome. So the people themselves uh, now segment, uh, even though they, they, they're just, they have, they're common humans, they segment and they play into the power game of battling. Well, you have Ukraine against Russia. In the past, you've had Poland. You've had uh, so many other countries in the region battling each other. That's what power does. It causes even the closest of family members or the closest of humanity to battle with each other. Power needs a battle to sustain its power, and that's exactly what's happening. And then the people play into it, and then they elect leaders who are powerful, who are protect and defend them from the other countries, and now it intensifies the battles. Uh, that's that's what's exactly what's happening, I, and again, there is so much love also between Ukrainian people and Russian people, but when it comes to the governments, when it comes to power, uh, no, there has to be a battle. When and how will the war end? Will nukes be used? What's the future of Ukraine? 
It's very difficult to answer that because there are so many possibilities and potentials. One of the greatest concerns that I have right now is about the use uh, and abuse of nuclear weapons, not not on a mass scale, but on a limited scale, or the uh, the destruction the uh, of this nuclear power plant that supplies so much power for Ukraine, but now has become part of the battlefield. If that uh, is out of control, if that is one of the pawns in the game, it's going to cause a tremendous amount of human uh, life, human illness, environmental damage. It doesn't need to come to that, although my concern is that it's heading that way. Uh, That will wake up the rest of the world who will absolutely then come in and do what is necessary to prevent the further use of any sort of nuclear weapons. That is why you are here. That is why those of you who live in Russia and Ukraine and Chamber around the world are here to bring the light to shine a greater potential. Does it have to be things like a nuclear uh, catastrophe? No. There could be uh, realizations by leaders that all of this is in vain, all this fighting and the war, too much has already been lost. There could be realizations that there could be a peaceful settlement, uh, although right now it's not one of the high probabilities. It could be a coup, uh, whether it's in Russia, whether it's in Ukraine, a coup that changes the direction of this whole thing. But right now, if you feel into it, the tensions, the energetic tension is so high right now in this region. Uh, as well as the suffering, but something has got to break, and that is why I am encouraging each and every one of you, whether you live in this region, whether you live in any other place in the world, it is time to shine your light. N- and not to not to take sides, not to uh, try to cause certain things to happen, but to shine the light so that the people in the leadership positions can see that there are other alternatives for resolution. Right now it's at a very, very stressful point, and as the winter begins to set in, it could get much worse. Uh, Russia is rich in natural resources and gas. Russia receives billions of euros annually from the sale of minerals. But the country remains very poor with a low quality of life. According to statistics, 20% of the population lives below the line of poverty. What is the economic poverty in Russia connected with? A high level of corruption and inability to manage money or simply an inefficient use of money? Uh, it's exactly what you said, uh, very perceptive on your part. For one thing, power uh, almost demands corruption. Uh, power is, is a great lie, and therefore it will, it will demand, uh, it will seek corruption, and it will go into the hearts and minds of men and women uh, to bring about corruption uh, with people who otherwise uh, aren't necessarily corrupt. But uh, power finds its way into the weak spots, whether the corruption is uh, for money, whether the corruption is sex, whether the corruption is simply the manipulation of other people. There is a tremendous amount of corruption around the world, uh, around the world, but particularly in Russia. Again, it's because of the power vortex. It's not because Russians are bad people. It's simply because of this power vortex that is clinging on, is is gluing itself to this area. Power and corruption bring about inefficiency, uh, inefficiency uh, in systems and methods and logistics and distribution. It brings about a, an inefficiency in innovation more than anything. And that is literally what's happening right now. Russia, a land that could be great, a people that could be very affluent, uh, people that could be abundant in so many different ways, but the corruption in the country is tearing it apart. And yes, there is corruption everywhere, but here the corruption is particularly highlighted because of the power vortex that's here. The corruption is showing up now in the Russian military. 
the, the fact that uh, the what is claimed to be the strength of the military isn't that way at all because uh, because the equipment is falling apart, breaking apart due, due to corrupt business practices. But more than anything, I would say it's the the inefficiency and the lack of innovation that are causing some of the greatest economic problems right now. There, if you look at a global scale and you feel into where is where is the innovation coming from for this planet? Right now, a lot of it's coming from China. China was not necessarily known as an innovative country, but right now they are so... Uh, progressive in so many ways that uh, they're demanding innovation and they are making room for it within the systems. Uh, the United States for a long time has been an innovator because you see the United States is not about a people. Uh, Russia uh, has a long history with the people uh, as do other parts of Europe. The United States is new. It's not made up of Americans. It's made up of people who immigrated from Russia and Europe and Africa and China and, and all over Asia. So it's unique in that respect. There's not, a, there's not an old nationalism like you find in, in countries like Russia. So it, it tended to be much more innovative and, and because of the economic systems, it rewarded innovation. Uh, there's innovation in many, many parts of Europe as well. Uh, the Germans are very, very inno innovative, and the Norwegians uh, innovative in, in their own unique way. Uh, the French, uh, not as innovative as I'd like to see, but there have been some great inventions coming from uh, my favorite country, France. A and I joke about it, uh, not in a, I joke about France because I did truly love it. You know, I wasn't born there or raised there, but I loved, I loved the sensuality of France, and that's why I always jokingly refer to it. But nationalistic, no. And I know, indeed, the the French have made many mistakes when it comes to uh, the, their government and and the treatment of people, uh, as was seen even in my lifetime with the French Revolution. So, uh, good questions. I, I have to I have to stop and comment for a moment. The questions here are very very good, and for those of you listening, I'm sure you can feel the angst or or the anger, but these are very insightful questions. And as I'm feeling into them, I feel the sin sincerity of those who are asking them. So let's continue with a few more. Okay. So, what? Is, okay. Wait a minute. What is the purpose of the conflict between Russia and Ukraine in terms of planetary change? As I stated when I opened, uh, it's really about uh, the power vortex. And then there are many vortexes around the world. And the, the power vortex is a concentration of uh, energies in a certain area, and it becomes almost like a magnet. Uh, in a way, it's like a tornado, and it wants to keep getting bigger, developing more power, sucking in more energies. And you can't blame it on any one thing. It's certainly not the creation of a, of a government or a sinister force. It's, it's a reflection of humanity. And what you see here with this conflict is what I consider to be the last big stand for battle power issues, for war power issues on the planet. It, while it involves money, while it involves a lot of other things, the, the real nature of this vortex is about, is about the bully energy, battling nationalism and, and imperialism and trying to take over other, other lands. It won't work. This uh, uh, was asked before, how does this work out? I can tell you one thing, it will not work out for Russia. Russia will not occupy Ukraine and will not be able to go in take over other countries. There is enough consciousness on the planet right now, whether it's Russia or anywhere else, that will not tolerate this kind of bully force. Uh, for those of you in Russia, I'm not calling you bullies, but I'm saying that there is a bully energy that's taking place, and it's backed up by the, the nuclear arsenal that you have. 
There are other bully uh, countries in the world. But the attention right now is being focused here. The world is not going to tolerate it anymore. And the more all of your light shines, the more the world, the more humanity will be able to find other solutions and put the bully to rest once and for all and free the people, the Russian people, from a country that I truly love very much. Why is there such a strong group of Russian Chambra that seem so disconnected from this reality that you're describing? Uh, first of all, I want to say that uh, I, I applaud Russian Chambra. And one thing I, I love about Russia in, in the past and, and even now is they've always been mystical, which is very interesting considering the in in the modern times, uh, really some of the lack of freedoms that they've had, but th they've always been mystical, even in the communist era where religions were frowned upon. Uh, they had a wonderful sense of mysticism. I would like to see that return. Uh, and uh, it is such a, uh, I can envision a time when people will travel from around the world to the uh, to the mystery schools, the modern mystery schools, of Russia, there's something in, in the consciousness of the people in the country, that, that, really encourages this, which is very interesting because, so many other things are are suppressed, so, uh, I I love that that part, and I think in in answer to the question, I've answered it in many other ways, but I did want to remark on the the beautiful mysticism. <sighs> Um, basically, you've been really covering lots of questions in, in, in your answers, and so it's getting a little challenging now. Um, there are a few questions that are more personal than that. Um, and, and I'm just curious to when you're going to ask me a tough question. <laughs> there, there was such, so much beauty in all these questions from Ukrainians and from Russians. Um, I guess uh, one of the big questions is how do how do you stand behind the short wall when you're standing in the middle of all this violence and, and bombings and you know how do you do that how do you stand behind the short wall and how do you bench in this environment? I'll make a, a broad general statement that uh, probably is difficult to uh, it's easy in theory difficult to put into use but it's not yours. Uh, this war is not yours. The power vortex is not yours. The ancient battles are really not yours. Uh, recognize that. And this will help to a degree, but it is still difficult if you're, particularly if you're living in Ukraine. And I'm going to ask all the Russian chamber right now to put yourself in their shoes. And it's not about who's right or wrong, but you're not living with a constant bombing and the raping and the looting and the burning of fields and the the horrors that are taking place. I, all you Russian chamba, put yourself in in the place of the Ukrainian chamba right now. And it's not about who's right or who's wrong, but what if it was your village or town that was being bombed on a regular basis? Russia is not being attacked. Uh, there, you know. The, you could say the Ukrainians are defending themselves, and you could argue till sunset whether they're right or wrong. It's not about that. But I'd like you now, one of the greatest things you could do to create a wonderful shift is for the Russian Chambra to have sensitivity towards the Ukrainian Chambra. Don't argue about who started the war and was it right or was it wrong? It's not about that. It's a power vortex. It's like an SES energy that's fallen over the land. And with some empathy on your part for what it's like to be not just a Ukrainian, but a Ukrainian Chambra right now trying to shine their light, this will move some energy. Get over the fact of Putin or Zelensky or the West or any of that taking place, feel into Ukrainian Chambra. And for all of you around the world, feel into that. They're, they are putting themselves right in, in the front line of things. And yes, trying to shine your light is very, very difficult. I am so proud of 
the Ukrainian chamber for rising above all the noise and even being able to just do a little bit of benching and shining light uh, and, and staying there to, to bring that light. I, it's like it would be like going out and standing in the middle of a tremendous hurricane that's taking place and trying not to be swept off your feet, trying not to let the forces of the hurricane slam you to the ground. In other words, it, it's about feeling into the hurricane and realizing it's just energy. It's hard to do when it's slamming against your face and you know, trying to throw you off your feet. It's the same way with the Ukrainian Chambra. To understand that it's, it's not yours, uh, but yet you've chosen to be there to bring this light, to not battle this, this great force of, of the power vortex, but rather to continue shining light. As you do, this force will, will diminish. This force, this old power vortex, it will crumble. It has to. The planet is too far advanced right now for this type of thing to take place anymore. Has the percentage of people in Russia increased during the war who are ready to take their freedom and stop playing the role of the victim, blaming everyone outside? What is the percentage of free people in Russia and in the world, and how can this change? You'd have to define free, what that really means. Uh, and many people think that free is just the ability to go into a grocery store and buy what they want. But true freedom, true freedom is uh, freedom from the human condition, in other words, the master being able to be in uh, the physical, in the biology, and out of it. Uh, true freedom is to freedom from mass consciousness, uh, from time and space. And the truest of all freedom is the ability to go into any of these when you want and to go out of them when you want, as we discussed in Master's Life about being on both sides of the river. That is even greater freedom than one who is simply free of time and space, uh, simply, uh, somebody who is simply free of mass consciousness. The freest of the free are those who can go into it and go out of it at will and desire. How many on the planet uh, have that true sense of freedom? Uh, I uh, almost not even want to give a number because it is so, so very low, but uh, not even one percent, not even a hundredth of one percent or thousands of one percent of the people have that kind of freedom. Now, the freedom you're talking about was really the freedom uh, the freedom to decide what kind of career you want to go into and who you want to marry and uh, how you want to live your life, uh, basically. Not speaking in terms of metaphysics, but just life. People that are relatively happy with their freedom, uh, about 5%, 4 to 5%. Uh, and it's not just wealthy people. Um, as a matter of fact, sometimes wealth is one of the greatest traps of all. But people who are free, who, who know they can pick up and just travel the world at any point, or walk the world, not even on airplanes, but uh, freedom to do what they choose to do, uh, about 4 to 5%. But that, in a way, seems like a low number, but it's actually a tremendously high number. Uh, just one generation ago, that number was probably about less than 2%. What final words do you have for the people of Ukraine? Uh, I have final words for Shambra in general. And the final word is remember why you're here on the planet. It is not to battle. It is not to suffer anymore in your personal life. It is not to take sides or to uh, carry arms. It is to bring light to the planet. And in the meantime, it is to enjoy your life. Now, some of you have a difficult time if you're in Ukraine and, and to a degree in Russia right now with all that's happening. But in another way, it is the very reason why you came here to be in a difficult situation. And yes, I do understand it is very difficult. But you came to be in this most challenging situation to shine the light at this time 
of the machines at the time of the new human species on the planet. Feel into why you're doing it. Feel into the passion. And, and if you can't feel it, then it's time to do something else. But I already know why you're here, why you're, why you're there in Ukraine and, and Russia, and why it is not a battle between Ukraine and Russia. It is a battle with, it's not even a battle, it is about the releasing of that old power vortex, the bully power on the planet. It's taking place right in your backyard. It's not about Ukraine versus Russia. I mean, it is in the media, it is in, in politics, but with you, it's not about Ukraine versus Russia. It's about shining enough pure light of your consciousness that it puts an end to the bully power vortex once and for all. It will resonate around the world to other countries when they see that bully power simply won't work anymore. It will actually work against you. It will destroy your economy. It will destroy your your morale, your your the 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 feelings of love for your own country. Uh, there are other countries watching this right now. Very carefully, China is one. Other countries that have their own type of um, territorial desires and, and are being influenced by lesser power vortexes. Uh, the eyes of the world are upon this right now. So let this no longer be an issue about Russia or Ukraine. Let it be an issue about no longer tolerating bully power on this planet anymore. We can put an end to it once and for all right now. Dear Shambra, shine your light. If you're carrying your arms, if you're, if you're taking sides, if you're nationalistic, if you feel that uh, you're, you're, you're being put down, if you feel that you're a victim, let that go. It is about all Shambra, shining your light. And as you do, you also increase the level of your mastery in this lifetime on this planet. So with that, thank you. I truly appreciate every question that was asked and all the questions that weren't asked. I could feel in each and every one of them, even with some of you a bit angry, that you have a true compassion for this planet, and not just for your country, but for this planet. Thank you for being here at this time where you are right now. With that, I am Adamus of Sovereign Domain. And with that, let's take the good deep breath, really feeling into that, that true spirit of each of us. Take the good deep breath, feeling into that, radiating and shining your light. The big thing, the, the most important thing that we can do, that consciousness. Take the good deep breath, feel into all that you are, Breathe deeply with feeling and compassion. Take the good deep breath, the good deep breath, no matter where you are, and feel. Feel this great potential. Breathe and allow for you. Thank you so much for being a part of this special session for Russian speaking Russians and Ukrainians. For all of us, actually. Take the good deep breath. Thank you.